Hi, today we're in Los Padres National Forest. It's the middle of July, super hot out. Today we're looking at our chamis here, also known as a greasewood. You'll find them all up in the hills, way up there, all those green plants. That's all chamis. This is uh, called a chamisal chaparral, named after our chamis here. So the scientific name is Adenostoma fasciculatum. He gets his name fasciculatum because his leaves, they grow in bundles here. Here's a better example. Here, see how they grow in bundles? As a kind of spiral up the stem, bundle, 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 bundle. Almost like a California buckwheat, right? The bundles and fascicles are clusters. A cluster is called a fascicle. That's how you get the species name fasciculatum. As they bundle up the stem, they're light bundles and then they get more dense and dense and they kind of stick out farther and farther. At the end we've got this real dense cluster of tiny, tiny little leaves. And the tiny they are, the better they help with transpiration or loss of water through evaporation. So this is a rosaceae, so he's part of the rose family. He's a flowering plant, and he's noted for his greasy, greasy stems, and his greasy foliage. That's why he's called a greasewood. In the Spanish, they called him a chamizo back in the 1790s when they were exploring the lands up here in Southern California from Mexico. So he's super drought tolerant. He's highly adaptable. He grows in poor nutrient soils, barren soils, or exposed rocky areas. So his root base here, take a look here. He's got a really, really long tap root. It goes way down. And that way he can drink. Oh, the sun here. Okay, he could drink when there's no water, but he also has shallow surface roots, so if it rains, he's able to gobble up, snap up the water really quickly. So he's great for uh, survival up here. Hey, also, so he um, will propagate by seeds, also by a little special, I call it a lignotuber underground. It's at the base of the stem, at the, kind of at the burl. And if there's a fire, it'll wipe this guy out. And those little tubers will re-sprout and cause a new flower, a new uh, plant here. All right. So this, you get these, uh, you know, little segments here. Every time there's a fire, you get some new growth. So he propagates uh, that way, but it doesn't spread that way. Not like a creosote bush or the Laria tridentata you find out in the desert. The prop gets out and spreads and spreads and spreads and you get a ring around it. These guys don't have chamise rings like you might find a creosote ring. So overall he's described as a basically a shrub. He's got these long arching stems. They're either brown or they're a little grayish. So here this guy's a little grayish here. But you also find nice brown ones as well. Now they're usually less than 12 feet high. I think this guy's probably about six feet. He's diffusely branched. He spreads. Sometimes he's really prostrate to the ground or real low. And the young stems are always reddish in color as opposed to the grayish. But uh, after he flowers around spring, okay, we'll get uh, little seed pods that develop here. Little seed pods. And uh, you get the seeds off this guy from the flowers. But the seeds are essentially sterile. What they need is a real good fire to wake them up. So that's how he spreads around. But in a lot of parts of like Orange County or developed areas, this plant used to be super, super common. And uh, all the fire control, like Cleveland Natural Forest, it uh, controlled the growth and the spread of these plants. So 
they're there, you just can't find them because there's no fires to help propagate them. All right, this is one of my favorite plants here, our chamiso, our chamise, greasewood, and anastoma fasciculatum. Hey, also uh, medicinal properties, right? The oils from the twigs and the leaves, you can make a really strong tea out of them. They also use it to treat uh, skin infections like eczema and the powder from the leaves and the twigs. They're really good for sores and snake bites. Let's get bit by a rattlesnake up here. You gotta run to your closest chamise bush. You can also boil the branches, make a little liquid to help uh, sore, swollen, infected parts of your body. And the tea even helps relieve cramps, ulcers, and chest ailments. So there you go. This is our incredible, incredible plant. Look at that. Just loves to grow up here on the hillside. Okay. Thanks for watching. Have a great day.